Good evening. We're going to start the meeting, the City of Oakwood Commission meeting, March the 6th. First, we'll have the invocation by Joel Keller, have the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Wilson, and then we'll have the roll call. Please stand. Heavenly Father, as we gather here tonight, we ask your blessing as always on our meeting. Please give us the wisdom to make good decisions for our city. We ask a blessing on all the members of our city as they go about their business, keep them safe. We ask a blessing on all of our first responders and uh, the job that they do keeping us safe, keep them safe while they do that. We ask a blessing on all of our staff for the job that they do for our citizens. Uh, look over them as, and guide them as well, Lord. We ask, as always, a blessing on our military. Wherever they are in the world, keep them safe and bring them home to us. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Grogan? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Keller? Here. All right. We'll have the uh, proclamation tonight in our presentations for Work Conservation Month, April 2018. We'll read it here. Whereas the City of Okoy is working with all of its citizens and visitors to increase the awareness of the importance of water conservation for the present and all future generations. And whereas the city of Okoy is actively engaged in a water conservation campaign to promote the awareness of the necessity to conserve water, a natural and vital resource, and has continued to sustain the power program to assist in promoting water preservation through education to the citizens and visitors of Okoy through our alternative methods and items, and whereas annually the governor and cabinet of the state of Florida along with St. John's River Water Management District, designate the month of April as Water Conservation Month in the state of Florida and urge every resident and visitor to become more aware of the need to conserve water and thus promote a healthy economy and community. And whereas the month of April, a typically dry month when water demands are most acute, shall be designated as Water Conservation Month in the city of Okoy and the city will actively promote ideas and instruction to residents and visitors about how they can help save Florida's precious resources. And whereas every business, visitor, and homeowners can make a difference when it comes to conserving water, which is a natural resource that is essential to all living things. Now, therefore, the city of commission of the city of Okoy, Florida, in recognition of this important initiative does hereby proclaim April 2018 as Water Conservation Month in the city of Okoy and urge the citizens to participate in this important plan to conserve water. And with this here, uh, I set my hand and called the seal of the city of Okoy, Mayor Rusty Johnson. Charles, did you take in this? Oh. Is Charles Smith, our been over our water and sewer facilities. <laughs> All right. Comments from citizens and the public. Anybody in the, in the uh, public tonight has anything pertaining to anything that's not on the agenda? Now's the time. If it's not on the agenda, now's the time to talk. If not, we'll move on. All right. Staff reports. I have nothing this evening, Mayor. Everything was turned in on time. All right. Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Keller. Uh, nothing at this time, Mayor. Commissioner First. Not at this time. Commissioner Wilson. Nothing at this time, thank you. Commissioner Grove. Nothing at this time, thank you. All right. I've got some announcements here. The 16th Annual Best Fest, which is this hosted by the West Orange Chamber of Commerce, will be held this Thursday, March the 8th, from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Bill Breeze Park. 
come out and indulge in West Orange County's largest food tasting and business expo. The 13th annual Spring Flame will be held this Saturday, March the 10th, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Bill Breeze Park. The goal of Spring Fling is to educate, raise awareness, and empower residents to be safe. Activities include a dozen of vendors, free food, game, and activities. The city's general municipal election for commissioner districts two and four, and citywide for voting on referendum ballot questions regarding changes to the city charter will be held on Tuesday, March the 13th. To view sample ballots and get clarification and understanding of the charter amendment question, please visit the elections page on the city's website. Food truck and movie in the park is Friday, March the 16th from 6 p.m. through 9 p.m. at Bill Breeze Park. This month's movie is Coco. The movie starts at 8 p.m. Also on Friday will be free tours of the historic Withers McGuire House from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. At the February 20th City Commission meeting, I appointed Mr. Jeremy Bellis to the canvassing board. Unfortunately, due to a work conflict, Mr. Bellis has advised that he will not be able to canvass on both days that the canvassing board is scheduled to meet. So I would like to nominate Richard Griffin as his replacement on the board. Second. We have to make a motion. I mean, have, no, that's true. Okay. We we'll make that motion. I'll make the motion. Okay. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Keller. Go here. Second. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? If not. Okay. Motion carries unanimous. All right, thank you. All right, consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve consent agenda by Commissioner Keller. Go here. Second. Uh, second. I'll second. Second it by Commissioner Wilson. All right, no more comments. Let's vote. All right, move along here. All right. Out of number 13, right? All right, number, number 13, approval of resolution to rename the street flat at Wall Rock Drive, located within the flat of Forest Brook Phase 2 to Wall Rock Court. Uh, support Services Director Butler. This is a situation where a uh, subdivision was developed in phases, and they changed the name uh, from Phase 2 to Phase 3. In phase two, they thought the street might go through, and so they called it drive. When they built it in phase three, it turned out being just a dead end cul-de-sac street. And they called that piece court. And so there's confusion because there, there are two lots that are called drive, and the rest of the lots on that street are called court. So we've contacted all the owners, received no objections. Uh, we've contacted the utilities and other companies, and they've all agreed to make the change to Wall Rock Court so it'd be consistent for the whole street. This is a resolution of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the name of Wall Rock Drive to Wall Rock Court, directing the city clerk to provide notice of the change to certain parties, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, I'm gonna open it up to the public. Anybody have any comments on number 13, approval resolution, rename the street? All right, no comments, moving back to the desk. I'll make the motion to rename the street. Motion made by Commissioner Drive. Drive. We'll hear a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. No more comments, let's vote. Motion carries in the answer. All right, moving on to number 14. Approval of resolution to rename street platted Meadow, Med Isle Street Court. Same place, the Meadows, they flat of the Meadows to Meadow Street Court. Support okay. service director Butler. Yeah, so this has been here for a while, but it, it turns out that the software that's used by the Orange County Property Appraiser, the U.S. Post Office, and 911 doesn't allow hyphens uh, in the street names. And so it's been officially sort of named Meadow Sweet, with Meadow being one word, uh, and then Sweet being a separate word, uh, for the last several years. So we need to go ahead and make it official uh, so that we can be consistent with our own records and the records being used by the rest of the motoring public. How many years? <laughs> I'm not that old. This is a resolution of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the name of Meadow Suite Court to Meadow Street Court, directing the city clerk to provide notice of the change to certain parties, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, open it up to the public. Anybody in the public have any comments on item 14? 
Again, we notified all the affected property owners and we got no response back. Okay. All right, bring it back to the dice. There a motion. I'll, I'll make, make a motion, motion. to uh, approve the resolution. All right, there's a second. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Firstman, seconded by Commissioner Grogan. No more comments, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right, we're going to go to first reading of ordinances. On number 15, first reading of ordinance for Kelly West rezoning. 320 West Silver Star Road, project number RZ18-0101. Uh, Planner Jones. I, don't I think see we're just, I'm just going to read this first reading. Uh, so this is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from City of Ocoee R1 commercial to City of Ocoee C2 commercial on certain real property containing approximately 0.29 acres located on the south side of West Silver Star Road, 300 feet east of Ocoee Popka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Conference <laughs> Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, what, what this will be, this will be back for the second reading on March the 20th. So then if you have any comments, we'll do them on March the 20th. All right. All right, first reading, number 16 of ordinance for Bory annexation and rezoning. 1515 Blackwood Avenue. All right, this is the annexation ordinance. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.55 acres, located on the east side of Blackwood Avenue, 830 feet south of Old Winter Garden Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement providing for and authorizing the updating of the official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance, this is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, a low density residential to, or to Ocoee R1A, single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.55 acres, located on the east side of Blackwood Avenue, 830 feet south of Old Winter Garden Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing an, for an effective date. All right, same thing. We go up the public, not have the public here tonight, we'll have the public here on Next meeting will be March the 20th for this issue. All right. Next issue, 17, first reading of ordinance for Darren Center annexation, rezoning, and plan unit development. All right, this is the annexation ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately uh, plus or minus 7.11 acres located on the north side of West Colonial Drive and 1,325 feet east of the intersection of Blackwood Avenue and West Colonial Drive pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, <laughs> providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance, this is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1 to Ocoee PUD planned unit development on certain real property containing approximately plus or minus 7.11 acres, located on the north side of West Colonial Drive, 1,325 feet east of the intersection of Blackwood Avenue and West Colonial Drive, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, same thing. We'll have the public hearing on March the 20th at the next meeting for this issue. All right, going to number 18. First reading of ordinance for Lady Bird Academy annexation, rezoning to plan unit development and small-scale comprehensive plan amendment. 
All right, this is the first reading of the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately uh, plus or minus 5.45 acres located on the south side of West Road and 400 feet east of the intersection of West Road and Ocoee Apopka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability and repealing inconsistent ordinances. This is the um, this is the ordinance uh, for the comprehensive plan amendment, small scale comprehensive plan amendment, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, amending the Ocoee comprehensive plan as adopted on September 18, 1991 by ordinance number 91-28 as amended, amending the future land use map of the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan to change the future land use designation from low density residential to commercial for certain real property containing approximately 5.45 acres located on the south side of West Road and 400 feet east of the intersection of West Road and Ocoee Popka Road, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city future land use map, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. And this is the rezoning ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1 to Ocoee PUD planned unit development on certain real property containing approximately plus or minus 5.45 acres located on the south side of West Road, 400 feet east of the intersection of West Road and Ocoee Popka Road pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, same thing. This one will be heard on March the 20th, 2018 at the next meeting. All right, now we're going to the second reading of ordinance. Second reading of ordinance for inspiration plan unit development, PUD annexation rezoning, PUD and PUD land use plan. Uh, city planner rumor. You want to break? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. For the record, Mike Rumor, city planner. The item before you today has multiple components. It's a annexation, a rezoning. A PUD plan unit development and an associated land use plan. The parse, the property, and the subject developments located on the south side of the Florida Turnpike, west of McGuire Road, and uh, a little ways off of Common Boulevard. The parcel for annexation is a is a the total parcels is 16.27 acres of which the parcel on the east side adjacent to McGuire Road, which is adjacent to the downward ramp of McGuire coming over the turnpike. This, this is the sole parcel seeking annexation today. So we will annex it in an ordinance first, then the second ordinance will rezone both parcels, the existing parcel, and the annex piece into plan unit development. Parcel is undeveloped. It has a zoning of the existing parcel which had a previous approval diplomat tower has an existing zoning of C3 the parcel in Orange County is agricultural however the future land use designation on the property is commercial and we are facilitating a commercial mixed-use development today the development plan calls for a townhome development and mixed-use commercial the townhome is proposed on the parcel this would be the parcel for annexation <clears throat> and has direct access to it from the main access to the overall PUD. The commercial side of the development consists of a preschool to the north and then a three other retail buildings consisting a combined 71,931 square feet of retail office type use. It is proposed to be the stormwater for the site will be held in the rear of the townhome development, making a sort of an amenity package. So it'll be master stormwater for the retail commercial and the townhome will be within the townhome site. Access will be provided 
from one main entrance. There will also be a, a standard uh, an emergency access out to McGuire Road on an um, emergency access gate only. The property will be required, I'll get to that, to build a road that was already in a development agreement called Northbrook from Tommen Boulevard. Pull it up here. You can kind of see some of it. This will be the future Northbrook Road, a public road that the developer for inspiration will build. It's currently under the property ownership of the Heller company. They will dedicate, Heller will dedicate the right of way for a future road. The Inspiration PUD developer will build the road. <clears throat> and in the development agreement I'll discuss later, there are some impact fee credits and requirements for building the road to a certain type standard. <coughs> the annexation is a logical, as you can see, this property is a true enclave by Florida statute. We do have a voluntary application for annexation of the parcel. The project is being facilitated as a PUD with an associate, associated annexation and development agreement with such items as the requirement to construct the Northbrook Road, receive up to 60% impact fee credits based off the as-built cost of that future road. The aerial here does not depict, it had a, it had a, a, a initial building up front which was tall. This building has gone away. There's, a, there's another building in this court. This is a, a good idea of showing you how the building is going to situate off the site. It's well off of Tommen Boulevard. It's adjacent to the Florida Turnpike. You can see the, the ramp for McGuire. The, the property's tucked in pretty well. You can see the water features, how they're going to use the water as an amenity and it provides the stormwater retention for the entire site. The eastern half is the 90 unit townhome development. These will be high-end townhomes. There's an amenity, there's a clubhouse and pool amenity center. The applicant can expound upon more of on the townhome development. I have personally went out and with the applicant and saw a similar site um, near Orlando. The townhomes and the retail will have high-end features to them. Um, the applicant can discuss more on the type of tenants, but we wanted to give you a, a feel for the type of architecture you'll see on the site. With regards to the overall PUD and reviewing the project, uh, we've, we've gone through a long process with the applicant from pre-apps and the Development Review Committee has reviewed the proposed emergency access, the running of utilities, the construction of the road, and has recommended approval, and staff is recommending approval. Uh, with regards to the overall PUD, though, there were two kind of significant items that we were working out at the, at the last minute, sort of. Um, the first one being the proposed preschool aspect of the site. The preschool and the townhomes create a sort of a peak PM and AM trip demand that at the intersection of Northbrook and Tommen Boulevard during certain peak periods almost reached the threshold of needing a signal. It's not there. The road does not have enough traffic to warn a signal at this site but we wanted to take account of this development issue and figure out how to mitigate it so we're not kicking the can down the road and putting the onus on the next property owner. So the applicant is under a traffic study, their proportionate share for that signal with the traffic they would be putting during those peak AM and afternoon hours is about 9%. So it will be, um, we will be amending the annexation and development agreement in your packet to include that provision. The assistant city attorney has already been working on that to provide that mitigation. So that kind of overcomes that little minor issue with the traffic. Otherwise, traffic is fine. The second one is having the fee simple townhomes adjacent to the Florida Turnpike. Florida Turnpike's already done their widening. They've already done all their improvements. There's not sound walls. So we've, we've, the applicant has provided, proposed to put in a, a wall, significant landscaping, and then as a development agreement item, 
they're going to put in their sales literature, and it's in your staff report, letting someone know when they go visit the site to look at purchasing it, that they're adjacent to a state roadway, 10 lane, and there's, um, the city will not be required, is not proposing to be, to put up a sound law for them. So after we worked those items out and they made it through school concurrency, they had their school board hearing uh, last week, we were ready to recommend approval of this site. And the applicant has put together a fine team and I'm sure they want to get up here and do, uh, sell this job better than I have. So, Mayor, if you have any questions. I think uh, we'll open it up to the, uh, yeah, I got a speaking thing here for uh, M. Bradley Luzak. Luzak with a K on the end. All right. Good evening. Uh, my name's Brad Luzak. I'm the attorney for the applicant. I'm uh, with the law firm of White and Luzak in Winter Park. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this evening and have an opportunity to talk to you. I probably won't do nearly as good of a job as Mike Rumor. He did a great job of presenting it. We have a terrific team that, uh, that brought together this project. Some of those team members are here this evening. We have Mr. Veloso, who's from the Developer Diplomat Development Group. Mr. Veloso has more than 10 years of experience uh, as a general contractor and project manager here in Central Florida, and he's also the CEO of Yellow Rock Construction. We have Ray Braddock from PKA Orlando. PKA is an engineering and land development firm in Maitland. Uh, some of you all may know uh, Mr. Braddock from his days at Boyer Singleton. He was the CEO there for many years. They eventually got acquired by, uh, by um, Dewberry. We also have Bob Hahn from Hahn and Hahn Team Inc. Uh, Mr. Hahn and Hahn Team Inc. is a multidisciplinary boutique and land planning, branding, urban design, and project management consulting firm in Winter Park. Um, like you, he too is a uh, volunteer in his community, Winter Park. He serves on the P&Z Commission there. Um, we also have Mohammed Abdallah, who's a leading traffic engineer from uh, Traffic and Mobility Consultants. We have all these folks who are really excited about this project and would like to stand up here and talk to you about it at length. But, Mr. Rummer, rumor did such a great job that what I'm going to propose to you is I'll make all those folks available to you for any questions you may have and um, and if not uh, let y'all get on to it so please any questions for me or the team we'd welcome them at this time. All right I'm gonna I'll open it up for the public first. Anybody in the public have any comments or anything you want to talk about out of 19 for inspiration plan unit development? All right. We'll bring it back to the podium here and Commissioner uh, Grogan. Yeah, <clears throat> on the retail side, um, how, how many square feet of retail do we have over there that you plan on building? Roughly. 70,000. Have you been a, um, are there any names of anybody that's approached you yet or have you been soliciting the, the property for, to anybody yet? You have to, you have to come up, sir. To the <coughs> Give your name. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Ray Veloso, uh, the developer. Yeah, we have uh, Amazing Explorers Academy, which is already signed up for the uh, for the school. It's a STEM-based school that uh, one of the uh, units just opened in Lake Nona, Tavistock Laurier Park. Uh, it's being featured as uh, one of the best uh, preschools uh, in the entire uh, Florida uh, because it. Uh, teach kids uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. So it's a different approach. Uh, there is a few companies uh, doing classes of STEM, 
but uh, Amazing Explorers is a uh, 100% STEM school. So uh, the school opened uh, uh, in January and uh, is at capacity uh, 60 days later. Uh, there's awesome raving reviews about the school, so uh, they're coming uh, to the site. That's the uh, building uh, towards uh, Turnpike on the commercial side. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, Realty One Group, uh, which is a uh, real estate franchise coming to the uh, 12,000 square foot building. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, pre-leases with doctors uh, and uh, small uh, units. Uh, so there is about 30% of the project uh, in addition to those schools that are spoken for. Uh, but uh, this project is really catered to the uh, uh, to the boutique uh, high-end uh, clients. We have uh, redeveloped a building in uh, Veranda Park in Metro West uh, uh, by the golf course. Uh, it's an 80,000 square foot building that uh, there were existing three other buildings in the same uh, uh, complex that were built out. So this particular building we bought from the bank uh, two years ago. And then on the interior, we built it as a high-end energy efficient unit. Uh, so that building uh, currently is at 100% capacity for the past two years. Uh, average unit size is about uh, 1,200 square feet, which we are mimicking that format okay. in here, uh, which allows for a, uh, a uh, rent price that is about uh, 2,200 to $2,500 total. So what we found out is, uh, there's a lot of doctors, uh, marketing companies, uh, internet companies, uh, uh, massage companies, uh, boutiques in general that uh, they can't find something of quality in a well-groomed uh, 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 environment where it can be uh, cost-effective for them. You know, usually when you go to Dr. Phillips and other areas, you're going to be paying $3,500, $4,000 per month. So. Uh, we decided to uh, bring to uh, to this area, which we we think is uh, well located because of its geographic uh, uh, position, where you can get to Dr. Fields real quick, downtown mm -hmm. Orlando, Winter Garden. Right. Uh, so we felt that uh, uh, this area would be perfect for this type of project. So uh, we own the uh, uh, commercial side uh, free and clear for the past. Uh, I don't know, 10 years, it's been a long time. We had developed a uh, high-end uh, uh, three-story building there. And then when we were uh, looking to uh, build one more project in, uh, in Orlando, we were looking for uh, high-end uh, townhomes. And uh, the slot next door was just the right uh, option because we decided to redevelop the commercial and create something that uh, it's kind of unique starting to happen in the best areas of town like Lake Nona. Uh, it's a great example uh, where you're able to bring fiber. Uh, you know, all those units are going to have uh, at least 200 megabytes uh, up and down. We already uh, have uh, uh, made sure that this is available in the area. So everything's going to be energy efficient, high end, bringing that quality. We just made the footprint a little bit smaller uh, so it's also not necessarily cheap, but cost effective. You know, it's about value, not being a million dollars and not being very low, it being right at a sweet spot where we can uh, bring in this new mind, executives, and uh, all these business owners that uh, need that. You know, Okoye is a great location because it, it, there is a, a good income, especially in this particular area that the site is located, uh, but there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's moving someplace else, you know, to go after this product. So uh, uh, so we think it's terrific. So, you know, maybe I spoke too much, but I gave you, you know, a, a good feeling about what Thank you. Is. Very good. My pleasure. Thank gave you. Gave a thorough answer. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner okay. Wilson. The only question I have is, um, Mike, could you tell me, were there any any um, residents in the, from the neighborhoods at PNZ? and z There it, were there two, were and only one spoke in it was just about the access across. You want to know how that was going to work. So, okay. It's typically in the past has been some. We've had some people show up in that area, but just two, and they were they were fine with it. Okay, thank you. Commissioner First, I'd just like to thank the applicant for working so well with the city 
as you know, early on in the project, uh, the product that you brought forth, I, I made it clear that I couldn't support that with the apartments involved in it. Uh, my district down there has a real issue with apartment buildings now, and they wanted to make it clear that uh, they didn't want any apartments in any shape or form. But you went back and diligently reworked that product, and you presented a product to where the city and the developer is in agreement that it's going to be a very nice project. And I just wanted to thank you for working so hard on that. Commissioner Keller. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I probably Mike, more a question for you, but um, with this backing up to the turnpike, have we really heard any issues or complaints from um, the apartments that are backing up to the? Right. Yeah. No. Okay. So, so uh, we're we're good with uh, how they're planning on doing the um, the wall and and the. Um, uh, it's, it's worked for about five years now. I haven't yeah, had so. any complaints. Okay. Now, that was it because I just want, because I know that was a big concern the last time and I, I hadn't heard any complaints. So I wanted to make sure that I hadn't missed something there. So that, that sounds good. Thank you. I would say that uh, if they come in and buy, like I said, they're going to tell them up front and show them yeah. up front. And they're going to come in and see the turnpike. Yeah, look, <laughs> yeah. They, better know, they better know full well what they're doing. Yeah. So, I, I know that in, in the years I was commissioner on the south side, and I, I talked to a few of them a few times over this project, it, it would have been a hard sell to ever come up with apartments. wouldn't have been. So, and some of the other things they've come up didn't work, but this this probably could work. It's, it's a uh, town townhouses or mm -hmm. homes where people can buy and so buy deal. So I think that'll be no problem. Uh, sound barrier, I think they understand, you know, and then you put the landscape in what wall we do. And I personally, I don't know about Commissioner Purser, even when I was there with the apartments bill, I never got a complaint about the sound, so I don't know if you've got any. Not the sound. So I think uh, it's, it's a thing that will benefit the city and business. And I think the citizens, I know their major, their major uh, things when they talk to me, and I know probably the Commissioner Purser is, is the traffic flow and the traffic patterns, and so that's the, the main thing we have to watch and make sure of is the traffic. So. Um, that's it. I, I don't have no other questions. Good job, it looks to me like. I think the city attorney's caught his breath. So you can. <laughs> we have, uh, Mayor, we have four items to approve as part of this uh, project. The, yeah, we'll do them one at a time. Let me read the, um, the annexation, the title to the annexation ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately plus or minus 10.66 acres, located south of Florida's Turnpike and west of McGuire Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owners. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. All right, I need a motion for the uh, first and second reading of annexation. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Keller to approve, second. <coughs> second. Second by Commissioner First. All right, no more questions, let's vote. All right. Second item is the rezoning ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1 to Ocoee C3 commercial to Ocoee planned unit development PUD on certain real property containing approximately plus or minus 16.27 acres located south of Florida's Turnpike and on the west side of McGuire Road pursuant to the application submitted by the property owners. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee comprehensive plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map Repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner First. Any more talk? Let's vote. Motion carries your names. Let's go to the number three. Third item is approval of the land use plan. There's no ordinance that goes with this. This would be approval of the land use plan consistent with uh, city staff recommendation. 
right, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the land use plan. Motion made by Commissioner First, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Last one. Final item is the annexation and development agreement as presented as part of the staff recommendation and as amended um, pursuant to the staff recommendation. All right, do we hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the development agreement. Motion made by Commissioner First, do we hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Let's vote. Motion carries you next. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item number 20. Second reading of ordinance revising language for the official municipal seal of the city and adopted new language for official city logo. Spanish. English. Spanish. No, you're right. Well, all right, this is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, creating Article 4 of Chapter 1 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Ocoee relating to official city seals and logos, repealing Section 1-11.1 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Ocoee relating to the city seal, providing for enforcement, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. All right. Um, you going to introduce me? Uh, give me your spiel. Okay. Uh, Al Butler, Director of Sports Services. Uh, this turned out to be a more interesting project than I thought it would be. Uh, so we have lots of logos. Uh, what precipitated this was a uh, finding that several websites were using the city logo and making a connection to the city that we weren't really in favor of. Uh, so we uh, talked to the city attorney about how to protect uh, our trademarks uh, and we came up with uh, a game plan for how to do that. So we worked with them on this. Uh, essentially, we have to readopt the uh, corporate seal because we're moving it to a, a new location in uh, city ordinances. Uh, it's not an exceptionally attractive seal, but it gets the job done. Uh, we have a city logo. Uh, we have it in uh, black and white and colored versions and with and without language. So you adopted this as the official city logo on April 16th, 2013. Uh, so we would be making this official now uh, in the ordinance and be able to work with the city attorney to get it registered. Uh, this is the typical way that the logo is used on city vehicles. Uh, there are a number of different approaches that have been used, but we're going to settle on something fairly simple like this. Uh, we also discovered that there were two departments that had service-specific logos that they utilized. This is the one at the uh, police department. You can see how they use it on their vehicles. Uh, and then this is the one that uh, has most recently been adopted by the fire department. Of course, they have a number of red versions, but they've settled on the black, which shows up nicely on the vehicles which are painted red. Uh, we have a few things left to do uh, after you adopt the ordinance. Uh, working with the city attorney to register the trademarks, that his staff is ready to go on that. Uh, we also need to work with the uh, fire police and a couple of other departments to settle on new uniform patches, uh, for which uh, Commissioner Wilson was an example. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wore this purpose. Right, right. Uh, we've discovered people have strong feelings about logos, as you may recall from a few years ago. Uh, so this, this is going to be a little bit of a, a project. Uh, and then we need to standardize the vehicle signage about who gets stripes, doesn't have stripes, how the department names are put on them, and those types of things. But otherwise, uh, the main thing we need to do is adopt the ordinance. It makes it an official statement of city policy that we can enforce uh, through trademark protection and we can uh, protect the city's brand. Any questions? Okay. Do I have to burn these? No, but you can't give them away to people. Oh. I'm gonna open the uh, I'm gonna open the uh, item up for public. Anybody in the public have any comments on the uh, item we're talking about here, the uh, seal? I'm gonna close it. Come back to the podium. Your motion. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. Second. 
Seconded by Commissioner Grogan. Let's vote. Motion Thank carries you. in that. All right, regular agenda nine, staff action. Nothing further. Comment from commissioners, Commissioner Grogan. Um, well, Mayor, I hope you can help me out with this when it comes to you. You were in the meeting, but uh, Fuller's Cross has been um, pretty much brought to our attention many, by many uh, residents. And with their help, the letters that I've asked to send to the county and with your help, with your letter to the uh, county mayor, uh, I'll let you uh, explain what's going to happen. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yes, just want to remind everyone about the spring fling that's going to happen this Saturday from 10 to 3 at Bill Brace Park. If the utility department will be giving away trees and having a rain barrel workshop, you must be a resident of the city of Ocoee, we ask you to please bring proof of residency. It's a fun day filled with activities, games, live demonstrations, all reinforcing safe behaviors. There's, it's totally free events. There's going to be different programs there. There's hot dog. There we have three of our local organizations that are going to be taking care of the food. We have the Lions Club, the Women's Club, and the Junior Service League who are going to be there serving. Um, again, it's a total free event. Please come down, face painters, balloon artists, activities, and also where you can also, our departments are going to be displaying what their departments do, so it's a great opportunity for education and to learn what our city does. So again, it's in the Bill Breeze Park, which is located right behind City Hall, from 10 a.m. to 3. There's going to be a game truck for a few hours. Kona Ice will be there. So again, it is a free event. Please come down, bring the family, have a fun time. Please remember to vote on March 13th in the citywide election and referendums, correct? Commissioner First. Best Fest, Thursday night, 5.30 till 8. I'd like to see everybody come out for it. It's a great event, a lot of fun. Come on out and enjoy the best of uh, what West Orange County has to offer in the way of food and drink. Thank you. Commissioner Keller. Uh, just a, a re-reminder about the election. Um, I, I think what I keep hearing around the city is very few people seem to know that there's ballot amendments out there. Uh, folks, this is a, while it's just the second and fourth district that have commissioners, commissioners running, all of the districts will be voting because there is eight ballot amendments, uh, charter amendments. So please make sure that you check on what the amendments are. Please get out there and vote so that we can, we can get a, a really good feel that that whatever happens on those, uh, that it's actually the, the will of the, the majority, as opposed to just uh, the second and fourth district voting on it, because they're going to be coming out for election. So please come out and vote. Thank you. All right. Um, we were, Commissioner Grogan had been working on it. We've, we've all kind of been taking the uh, emails from the uh, uh, north side of town, mainly on the uh, Fuller's Crossroad intersection with. Uh, Oak Way Poplar Road. So this, we had voted to send a letter to the Orange County Mayor and we got a meeting with the Orange County Public Works Department. Uh, since the city manager of Shadrick, uh, planner uh, Mr. Rumor, and myself and Steve Crew, Public Works Director, went down and met with him yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And, which was very amicable. I got surprised. It was. So what we've come up with in this and it is our responsibility too. So to let citizens know, it's a process that they're going. The county's going to let us take the lead on it, and uh, and for and do the uh, process to start to do what we can do the intersection improvements. Uh, maybe you want to say anything, Craig? You know a little more about all that. I will. I will say while Craig, Assistant City Manager, is coming up, I want all citizens to please understand we set out that we are doing it but it is not abracadabra food that will be done. It will take a few months to get this done. We are in the process with the county to get this done. So everybody, please pass along to your neighbors and tell them. It will be a few months, but we're in the process of starting. Thank you, Mayor. I hope we got that on tape. I'll be using that with you later. Um, no, I, I appreciate that and appreciate the commission and, and the mayor um, urging the county to work with us. We 
had a meeting with the Public Works Division of, of Orange County yesterday. They agreed uh, to be a 50% partner in this effort, which I'll point out that we have collected uh, considerable funds that we pointed out in the letter um, to the tune of almost $300,000 from developers who developed in that area as part of their proportionate share mitigation. And we also have right away to contribute. So uh, we're waiting on an overall cost estimate. We have a ballpark idea. We feel like we're going to probably already be halfway there with what we have. And um, the scope will entail adding a, a, uh, a left turn lane for each approach of that intersection in mast arms. So um, that will add considerable capacity during peak traffic times. And I myself um, have sat through several um, frustrating cycles at that intersection. So um, this is a, a, a really good thing for the city and it's a collaborative effort with the county. It's going to improve an area that we're getting tremendous pressure from developers to continue to build in. So this is a good thing. And it's not going to happen overnight. Engineering plans have to be produced. We're looking at the best way to um, procure the, the actual construction of, of the intersection improvements. But we will move it as fast as we can. And um, I'm sure you'll see more later from Mr. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I, I, I appreciate the county's eagerness to also help us do that. So we're, we're going to get that started. And we've already got it started, really. So just remember, it won't be overnight. It will be a process. But the process is starting. So that's a good part. Uh, put everybody to remember, spring flame this Saturday. We're the, uh, oh, huh? One thing, Mayor, I will count on this sense of the best festival. Actually, the eighth. So. Yeah, the best fest is the eighth of March, this Thursday, from five to eight thirty. So it'd be down at the lake on the uh, uh, Stark Lake here, at, uh, Bill Breeze Park. Any more comments? No, no more comments. Meet the. Door.